Our speaker for this session is Aisha Sali Abdullahi, who is, an, who is a midwife based in Nigeria. Aisha Salu is an experienced senior academic that is interested, uh, he, who has conducted a lot of research in maternal and childhood nursing. She's actually interested in intrapartum nursing. She has published a number of review articles, both in international and national papers, and also participated in so many conferences. She has also participated in a number of training programs for midwife on enhancing life life saving skills and essential obstetric and new, newborn care and also enhancing midwifery educational skills she has been working in the amadebelo university who is a, who, who, which, which is a very famous university in nigeria for the last 10 years during which she has coordinated many activities in the department of nursing sciences college of medical sciences amadebelo university all in the zeal of mentoring and producing highly qualified, versatile and, and resilient midwife, and of course, workforce to provide care to the teaming population in Nigeria. Before joining the ABU, she's also a midwife instructor. She's a registered member with the Nursing and Midwifery uh, Council of Nigeria, and currently at the verge of completing her PhD program in midwifery. So I should tell you, we are very happy for your sharing your experience with us. I'm going to hand over the presenter right to you right away. You're welcome to this great day. Thank you so much, Halim Abdul. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, my Shasalu, as the my facilitator has rightly mentioned, my research is on assessing the satisfaction of midwives with the paperless spectrograph as a tool for monitoring labor in secondary healthcare facilities in Kabna State. country in African country. It's just an int introducing us to the research. I start with introducing the midwife as a primary service provider, especially to the Bactrian government, especially in this in Nigeria, in this part of the world. I find out that the services midwives provide range. They range from simple advices that they give to complicated procedures such as vacuum delivery. And for that reason, we will find importance is put into the ability of the midwives to participate in various strategies, so long as those strategies are aiming at improving the lives of the family. And we know the women as the unimportant member of each family. So this increased visibility and recognition of the midwife as a key provider of maternal and newborn health services. This life opportunity in a lot of challenges. And in Nigeria, you find out that the workforce we have, the midwifery workforce to be in particular, is engraved with a lot of resource deprivation. And this can be associated or rather has been reported to be associated with in girl child education, some gender based discrimination that occur in our societies and some conflicts. But oh, sorry, I'm trying to slide. Thank you. Control of labor is very essential and um, Considering the nature of activities that are during the regular portion, it is imperative to make service provision easier. And in a bit to do that, tools are usually being employed. So that the activities of the midwife as the service provider are made simpler. And part of those tools that are being approved for use to monitor the festival is the part. Now the particular have been approved to be effective in monitoring, especially the first stage of labor, as it guides the healthcare provider, the midwife in this case, 
in taking decisions promptly. But all that is confined. The battle has been heralded by a lot of cost effectiveness uh, problems, preventing or rather it's full, so hindering its ability to prevent that unnecessary delay in labor. So this is through continuous monitoring of labor. The pathograph can prevent delays in labor and it gives the midwife so that and the midwife the chance to guide her decisions, what she, when to make decisions and what will be the right decision to make, which is always crucial in preventing adverse obstetric outcomes, which immanently will lead to reducing maternal morbidities and mortalities. Now, what is this pathograph? The pathograph is a tool that is approved by the World Health Organization. In fact, it develops from what we call a cervical graph since, cervical graph since in the uh, 20th century, and uh, it develops into a tool in which in 2000 WHO was able to modify it for it to be used starting from the active phase of labor. So it has been used, especially in resource-deprived countries like mine, but though it is found effective, there are a lot of factors that are found to contribute to low rate of pathograph use. Some include lack of awareness, training inabilities among the healthcare providers. Sometimes you complain about inability of the tool, Sometimes it is a negative perception of So some of these are the factors that hinder effective use of the particular. And also additionally, some argue that the particular So you will need a lot of time to fill in the pathograph patient. So find your NSOT where you have a lot of clients at hand and not enough as midwives in the facility. It becomes difficult for you to use a pathograph for each woman in labor. It is as this as a result of this that the paper list part has been developed. Is the only those that we mentioned, and uh, what happens is that in 2008, an Indian gynecologist developed an approach they call the paperless pathograph. What this does is to ensure that the idea behind the use of the pathograph is being employed still in Moibo, but using that is chatting so they are using the difficulty in using it. What happens is that you in agreement with the uh, at the point that the service that is at one centimeter per hour in the active stage of labor, this is being used as a medium within which two time frames are calculated for every woman that is in labor, especially in the, uh, in the first stage of labor. So it means that when a woman comes in labor, you do the first uh, examination for the woman, you identify the cervical dilatation. Now, based on where the alert line and the action of the pattern in the application order of 1000, add specific hours and give the one time frame with which you, which you expect the woman to deliver. Now, what I mean is that from the time, uh, for instance, she is four centimeters dilated. That is when you start you open the paragraph for the woman. So when you uh, uh, mon you you rather take the exam dilates to delay so long as she had uh, maintains that line of the paragraph. So on the people's paragraph approach, you add those six hours to the time where you are at that particular moment and you write the time boldly on the chart 
of the woman, be it a med etiquette, a treatment sheet, or whatever you are documenting the care you give to the woman. So apart from that also, you add four hours to that initial time, which we call the accepted time, and that's also right to expect that you will the other secretary in green by the expected of delivery in red. So that those two time frames guide your activities in monitoring that woman in labor. So you that it is uh, you you require as to see that you have a time within which you are guided into the care you give to the woman. I mean, you expect the woman to deliver within the next six hours. If she didn't deliver, you become you assess the woman and you consider the possibilities of maybe referring the woman or to a of situation to another facility augmenting the label depending on what what whatever stage of label the woman is so this paper list has been tested in various uh, and one of which they are one of the settings where it has been tested is uh, can i interrupt just one second aisha i'm just the master facilitator and um, we're getting a secondary healthcare of facility <laughs> in Katana state in northern nigeria so the aim of the of this study Aisha. is to explore the level of midwife satisfaction. Those midwives that were involved in using the paperless part to monitor women in labor have been assessed to determine whether they are satisfied with the use of that as a tool so that argument yes yes aisha i don't know Hello. if you can hear us can you turn your video off okay. it's just causing a lot of interference so we haven't heard the last couple of things that you've said Hello. thank you that might make it better thank you yes i can hear you yes Oh, you're much clearer now. This sounds good. Yeah, I this is be better you. now. Yeah. Can we hear hearing you now too. Can you hear? We are hearing you. Can you hear us? Hello? Can you hear us? We can hear you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay. I can hear you. I can hear you. Mm -hmm. All right, continue. Okay, thank you. The research involves is a descriptive cross-sectional study that was done on the population of midwives that uh, that work in the particular delivery ward, and we used a questionnaire which had two sections. The first section gathers social demographic information of the midwives, and the second section is a seven-point semantic differential skill that gives uh, gathers information on the satisfaction of the midwives with the paperless photograph. So the midwives exposed in using the paperless photographs were allowed to monitor 200 cases. And it is after this monitoring that we distribute the system to assess their satisfaction, which we believe is uh, necessary to influence the use of the paperless photograph, which is a tool that is important in monitoring of labor. Ethical approval was obtained from the State Ministry of Health, and it was communicated throughout the study to the staff and the medical director of the hospital that is involved, and we try as much as possible to ensure confidence confidentiality and anonymity of the participants. Now, the data that was generated was 
analyze using statistical package for social sciences version 23 and the social demographic characteristics of the midwives was analyzed using frequency and percentage as well the data from the differential scale was uh, analyzed using a mean and a mean of four was considered as a lower level of agreement in considering that the semantic differential scale is a seven point scale this table shows as the social demographic characteristics of the midwives. A lot of them, you will see a good percentage of the midwives uh, are young. Uh, most of them are below 30 years of age. And a lot of them are qualified nurses and midwives. And uh, a good number of them also have uh, considerable years of experience. And there are a lot of them that have less years of experience showing us that they have a lot of they are promising to remain with the system. So looking at the, the satisfaction of the midwife, this table shows us the satisfaction level of the midwives, including the ease of using the tool, how available it is, how simple it can be to use it. How feasible will it be to use in those kind of facilities that you find yourself and an overall satisfaction with the two? So, an uh, aggregate mean of 5.78 was obtained. The opinion of the midwives on ease, availability, and feasibility of using the tool has been assessed and has been projected in the table below. And it shows us that the midwives consider the tool easy to use with a mean of 5.8 and it is available at a mean of 6. And they generally showed a satisfaction level of 5.5.6, which uh, is, uh, uh, shows that the satisfaction with the tool is really significant. So to conclude, we Test and null hypothesis that there is no significant satisfaction among midwives with the medical expert of them. And uh, the midwife satisfaction was used to in a t test, and with a p value of 0 0.007, we're able to conclude that the midwives are satisfied with using the p spartograph. The t test are for one sample t test. So we use that four as the uh, uh, as a um, as a level of agreement, and we compute it with the satisfaction, the mean satisfaction of the midwives. So the computed T was 8 point, almost 8.6, and greater than the critical value of 4.9 at 95% significant level. And the, because of this, we're able to conclude that there is significant satisfaction among the midwives with the use of the paperless spatula. So we can reject the null hypothesis. So as a result of this, we develop we, we develop the uh, following discussion. On looking at the social demographic information of the midwives, majority of them are young midwives, and uh, it indicates that the midwifery workforce is promising. That means they will take time ranging care to the communities, especially in a region there where maternal mortality is so high. This is very important. And uh, we find out that this finding was in contrast with the finding that was reported in Limpopo by Popola in 2006 of an aging workforce there. Our workforce, our midwifery workforce here is uh, quite young. More than half of the midwives are registered nurse midwives. So we are comfortable that they have the competency in rendering maternity services. And in addition to that, quite of them are experienced, and a lot of them will have more years of services to give. Uh, uh, apart from this, also the number of midwives in the ward fulfilled the WHO recommended number of 10 midwives per comprehensive health facility because we have up to 16 midwives in that work in that delivery. Uh, suit alone. The passive effectiveness of the tool was very high and an overall mean was high. This uh, level of satisfaction has also been recorded elsewhere. In uh, India, Sharma did a study in 2015 and they reported 
that 66% of the Levo attendants are satisfied with it, and they are satisfied with the paperless fatuga more than they are satisfied with the who fatuga. In Egypt, also Fatu and Ramadan compared the two, and they found nurses' preference of using the paperless fatuga. The question of the middle of the two, we believe, is an important determinant of its utilization. So long as uh, a service provider is uh, satisfied with using it, that is when we will expect the person to continue utilizing the tool and we expect the midwives will continue to use the people spatograph label so long as uh, it can be approved for use in our delivery suit. If this is born uh, is done, we are hopeful that quality of surgery care will improve. And this will also ensure the low are monitored appropriately and thereby prevention adversity outcome in the mother and in the babies. So we conclude that the paperless photograph can be a tool that will provide a means of adequate monitoring of labor progress. Uh, when that is done, it can improve the outcome of deliveries and this will ensure the satisfaction of the workforce with the resultant improvement of quality of obstetric care in the, our hospitals. So as a result of our findings, we are able to recommend that the paperless approach to using the paragraph should be adopted, especially in low and middle income groups, should be adopted by use in midwives so that we ensure that there is appropriate monitoring of labor in these women. And uh, also, provider satisfaction service should continue to be done in health facilities so that we can identify hindrances and challenges in service delivery such as satisfaction or otherwise with the use of tools and equipment that have been used in facilities. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aisha, for the presentation. Thank you, ma'am. We had a bit of party session because of the connection. <laughs> yeah, oh, but you were able to I'm take so us sorry. there. Yeah, thank you very yeah. much. Thank so you. we we will be taking questions from the audience. I would, if you have any question, anyone in the audience, please feel free to put it in the chat box there, and we're already here to pick it and throw the question to the presenter. Thank you very much for your time and for joining us today for the virtual International Day of the Midwife. Thank you all from all across the world for joining us. Thank you. Please feel free to put up your questions, please. We are here to pick it up here. Yes, I could see there's a question from Sheila. Thank you for presenting this. You have described satisfaction with use, which is important for monitoring labor. What assessment was done on the data that was entered in terms of accuracy and clinical decision made, which is the critical outcome? Okay. Did you get yeah. that or do I say yes. it again? Mm. No, I, 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 I got it. Okay. Mm. I got it. Actually, that was what led to our decision to use the uh, seven-point uh, differential scale, so that we have we open up the level at which the midwives uh, choose their options appropriately. So, for us to ensure that there is uh, accuracy and for clinical decisions to be made, we're able to also uh, agree on using ninety-five percent. Uh, level of agreement and that is why we also go further to do uh, uh, what you call a one sample t-test so that we ensure that what, we, what the data we're able to get is actually what they presented for us so there was no much uh, data cleaning that was, that was necessary because the sample or rather the population is small. 
we had only 16 midwives in the delivery suit and we were able to conduct our research within three months and this part is also is actually part of a larger study that looked at assess the accuracy of the epigraphy. So sure, this question can be more uh, uh, more appropriate to us while we discuss the accuracy of the paper list part. Thank you. Thank you. Sheila, I've done answered your question, please. The next question here is Mm. Aisha, are you there? Is the paperless yes, photograph used offline or online, please? Uh, thank you. In fact, the, the, the idea of using that line is one of the reasons why we propose the testing of the paperless photograph because anything that comes in with the use of light, with the use of internet, is really something that uh, uh, encounter a lot of challenges in this part of our world. So actually, the paperless program is used offline. It's an idea that you use, you calculate by yourself, and you write it down, and continue using those time frames to monitor the label. So it is offline, actually. Thank you. Thank you for the answer. Another question on the chat box. Does the paperless photograph mm -hmm. mean midwives will have to impute the figures electronically? Okay. The, what we are saying here is that it's no electronic application. Absolutely. You write it down on any the treatment sheet of the client, the paper where you record. We are still, most of our health facilities, actually a subtle sense here, are not yet at the level of electronic uh, health service deliveries. So we are still in paper on paper and viral era, actually. So that is why my, my sisters over there may not understand much of what we are trying to say. But we are still there. The electronic aspect of uh, service delivery. Thank you. Yes, still on it. Okay. Iska just asked a question How will the mm. resource constrained facilities in rural areas cope with this? Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's, the resource constraint is one of the major reasons why. Uh, we justify the assessment of the paperless photograph because instead of a midwife to spend minutes entering and charting cervical dilatation, charting fetal heart rate, charting uh, descent, and all other things, shading light the light contractions uh, strong contraction and so on so forth. the people's photograph cost doing these activities where you calculate time and you put the time frame within which you use that to monitor it is actually uh, the reason one of the major reasons the source constraints the major reason why the people is part of us i'm hopeful that um, rural area and be able to with the palace photograph effectively thank you Hello. Yeah, any more questions, Aisha? Mm -hmm. Is there any other thing? Yes. Yeah, I think I've been able to put uh, put oh. up the questions for you from from some. At Iska has just dropped another question. How can we tell whether midwives just validated the research to reduce their workload? Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Iska. That's a, a, a good question. And uh, uh, I, I don't know if we'll be able to validate whether the reason why we adopted and um, that is uh, part of the limitations of the study. So we cannot be able to validate the reason behind that. Um, conducting a qualitative study on satisfaction with the paperless program will be um, helpful 
in us as assemblies. And I'm sure this research is a part of a process. If at all the people is part of ground, we are approving our facilities, continuous uh, researches will have to be conducted to ensure issues like uh, this, the one that you have just raised. Thank you, Iska. Yeah, thank you very much for all the contributions and the question. Thank you, Aisha, for being able to tackle all the questions. And then I've just sent your email address to Sheila in case she wants to contact you because she didn't get to hear a bit of your explanation, which I've just which I've just dropped on the public chat. And please, every every other one that have some questions, could you please feel free and send Aisha an email or contact her from her email address that I've just dropped at the chat box. Thank you all for joining us.